For our mid-morning edition of Adirang News, I'm Mark Broom. Let's start by taking a look at the day's headlines. South Korea decides to self-revoke its status as a developing country at the World Trade Organization. The decision could have big economic repercussions for the South Korean economy. A fast-moving Northern California wildfire is threatening towns and homes in the state, driven by fast winds and bone-dry ground. The inferno has forced hundreds of people to evacuate their homes. Plus, protecting South Korea's easternmost island of Dokdo with the latest technology. We head to Dokdo to see how researchers are taking special care of the East Sea islets that hold such a special place in the hearts of all Koreans. So we start with the big news that South Korea has decided to give up its status as a developing country at the World Trade Organization. Seoul's finance minister Hong Nam-ki said on Friday the government made the decision given South Korea's global economic status with a per capita national income of over 30,000 US dollars and the external environment with countries like Singapore also giving up their developing country status. South Korea won't be given any special treatment as a WTO developing nation in future trade agreements, but there won't be any changes to previously signed trade deals. And we'll have more information on that story during our next newscast at noon. Now, South Korean Prime Minister Inakyo sat down in Tokyo on Thursday with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And the two agreed on the need to do something to improve their country's ties. Relations have been badly strained for months now over trade and historical issues. Our Kim mok reports. South Korea and Japan agreed on the need for a breakthrough in the current stalled relations between the two countries on Thursday. Seoul's first vice foreign minister, Cho se young who took part in the closed-door meeting, said that South Korean Prime Minister Lee na expressed Seoul's willingness to mend ties with Tokyo, and so did the Japanese prime minister. The prime ministers of the two nations agreed that they cannot leave the current strained ties unaddressed as they are important neighbors. He also delivered a personal letter written by President Moon Jae-in, which included a congratulatory message over Japanese Emperor Naruhito's enthronement and the need to work together to address issues of conflict. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expressed his gratitude and agreed to facilitate dialogue at various levels, including discussions on North Korea. The two prime ministers also agreed on the importance of seeking bilateral cooperation and trilateral coordination involving the United States to tackle North Korea's nuclear issue. During the talks, which lasted for 20 minutes, Prime Minister Abe also stressed that the two Asian neighbors should stay faithful to their 1965 treaty, which Tokyo claims has normalized ties and settled all issues of compensation for victims of colonial rule. He said that Seoul has been respecting the treaty just as Tokyo did and will continue to do so, expressing hopes that the two sides can continue to overcome their differences. However, regarding the possibility of a Moon Abe summit, the first vice foreign minister said that such specific discussions were not included during the talks but did not rule out the possibility of such a summit. Kim mok Arirang News. Now, questions still hang over whether North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will indeed accept Seoul's invitation to visit the southern port city of Busan for a multilateral forum that's going to happen in November. According to South Korea's ambassador to ASEAN, the possibility, however, slim, is still there. Speaking in Jakarta on Thursday, Im Song-nam said the door to the possibility of Kim's visit is neither completely closed nor completely open, expressing further uncertainty over the North Korean leader's possible visit. He added that with a month to go until the ASEAN-Korea summit, the North has yet to respond to the invitation. David Stilwell, who is the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs, will visit Seoul on November 5th. The U.S. State Department revealed Thursday local time that Stilwell is visiting Tokyo 
Rangoon, Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok, Seoul and Beijing from October 24th to November 7th. During his stay in Seoul, Stilwell is scheduled to meet with government officials to discuss ways to further strengthen their alliance and boost cooperation on their Indo-Pacific strategy and Seoul's new southern policy. As Stilwell will be arriving in Seoul after a three-day visit to Japan, there's attention on whether there will be discussions regarding Japan's export curbs on South Korea, the uh, terminated Seoul-Tokyo military intelligence sharing pact and three-way cooperation between South Korea, the U.S. and Japan. Now today, October 25th, marks Dokdo Day, commemorating South Korea's famous easternmost islets. It has a unique place in the hearts of Koreans and is renowned for its natural beauty and biodiversity. To better understand and preserve Dokdo, South Korea's Cultural Heritage Administration is implementing cutting-edge technology into its work. Lee min Sun reports from Dokdo. Located some 200 kilometers from the Korean peninsula, Dokdo, the easternmost territory of South Korea, is home to more than 280 species of plants, birds and insects, and 330 species of marine life. The entirety of Dokdo is designated as a natural monument, boasting beautiful scenery and almost unrivaled biodiversity. Because of its unique geographical characteristics, Dokdo has been more or less unaffected by human activity, allowing it to maintain its stunning natural balance. The spindle tree and ulung kukwa can be seen on Dongdo, one of two main islets of Dokdo. The topography of the island is slowly changing because of erosion and weathering caused by strong winds and harsh weather. That's why collecting detailed data over time is important to prevent any possible damage and problems. To better study every corner of the island, the National Research Institute of Cultural Heritage deployed a drone with a LiDAR system that can take 360-degree images and videos using near-infrared ray lasers and even collect data of the geographical features beneath the trees and plants. The new system saves time and money as it takes only about four hours to scan the whole islands, a task which would take up to a year if done without the technology. We can collect data using lighter drones at any time and any place and can deal with any sudden problems. We first use this cutting-edge device on Tokdo because it's a difficult area to access and we can obtain accurate data in a short time. The newly introduced laser drone can also be useful for conducting ecological studies of the nearby Ulungdo Island. It is the natural habitat of junipers and has a population of Ulungkukwa and thymes in Naridong Basin. The LIDAR drone will be used to shoot 11 natural reserves and 113 scenic spots across the country. The institute is planning to deploy the LiDAR drone once a year to collect data from these places over time and use the collected data for not only academic purposes, but to create content for practical use. Lee min Sun, Arirang News, Dokdo Island. Beautiful place indeed, I hope to go one day. And now, Apple's iPhone 11 series has finally been released here in South Korea, much to the excitement of uh, tech fans as well as Apple heads, shall we say. Three mobile carriers here, SKT, KT and LGU Plus, took pre-orders until Thursday and the number of those pre-orders are actually similar in number to the previous iPhone model. The iPhone 11 Pro, that's the most popular model in the series here in South Korea, followed by the iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro Max. The mobile industry expected demand to be lower as the local 5G market is growing fast, but the iPhone 11 series is only able to use LTE. But due to consumers' dissatisfaction over 5G quality here in South Korea, isn't uh, quite yet up to scratch. There were more pre-orders than expected. Mobile carriers expect demand to remain high after today's official release because many consumers here in South Korea only use iPhones.
This year marks the 100th anniversary of the first South Korean movie's release. For the past century, movies have become one of the most popular leisure activities in the country. However, those who cannot hear or see have been unable to enjoy them due to their disabilities. In this third part of our special Korean movie series this week, our chair Jong Yoon tells us how things are steadily changing for the better for deaf and blind film enthusiasts here in South Korea. Meet Jung Mi Ryong, a 55-year-old woman who enjoys movies differently than most of us. She comes to this particular cinema in Seoul once every month at 2 p.m. sharp. Instead of booking tickets online, she gets her ticket at a temporary ticket booth, where people from deaf and blind associations distribute special movie tickets. Blind for 12 years, she's been asked how she can watch a movie. But she says all she needs to do is just listen. Since I went blind, I can only enjoy movies with an audio explanation. It's the same story, only without images. I listen to the acting, the facial expressions of characters, how well it's written and what kind of sounds it has. But only a few movies are remade as barrier-free movies. Barrier-free movies are films with audio description to explain what is happening on the screen, or Korean subtitles that narrate dialogue, music and sound so that the handicapped can enjoy movies. The first barrier-free film in Korea started off in the first Persons with Disabilities Film Festival in 2000, organized by the Korea's Association of the Deaf. Then in 2012, two barrier-free movies were screened at regular cinemas under the production of professional movie directors, actors and scriptwriters. While previous versions faithfully explained the various on-screen action, the Korean Barrier-Free Films Committee gathered movie officials to make the first high-quality barrier-free versions that described the overall context and how they were acted by the cast. However, there is still a way to go in terms of limited screenings. The selections are very limited. Cinemas and times are also restricted. I wanted to see Joker, but couldn't. As international films require subtitles, I cannot enjoy them unless the dialogue is dubbed into Korean along with audio descriptions. To better promote inclusive cultures of people in different forms, Kobaf holds education programs and screens self-made barrier-free films for free. The visually and hearing impaired are not in the circle of commercial audiences. In order for the disabled and others to enjoy movies together in one space, we need a closed system, which offers selective subtitles and audio descriptions, such as smart glasses and applications for subtitles and headphones for audio services. Kim added, social recognition and help at the government level are needed to implement such infrastructure for a barrier-free society. Choi jung -yoon. Arirang News. The Seoul Metropolitan Government hosted a mayor's forum on climate change on Thursday. Attendees from across the world emphasise the need to take prompt action on the issue. Kim Bo Kyung reports. Representatives of 37 cities from 25 nations were in central Seoul on Thursday for a special forum on climate change. Local governments from around the world, including the Seoul Metropolitan Government, have gathered under one roof to discuss the importance of tackling climate change at local governmental level. The Seoul Mayor's Forum on Climate Change 2019 highlighted how cities can use local-level practical approaches to improve the environment. Rather than top-down, cookie-cutter, if you will, uh, philosophy, cities often pursue bottom-up, locally designed approaches uh, that accommodate the diverse economic, political, and social uh, structures that hold our communities together. And it's this knowledge and this practice that I think in many ways is what is the backbone of the innovation that we're now experiencing um, from the local level. He also emphasized that reducing the emissions of the top five cities of each particular country could account for a significant reduction of national emissions. The mayor of the Seoul Metropolitan Government asked local governments of other cities to do more to overcome the current climate crisis. As key implements of climate actions, we encourage citizens and local governments around the world 
to adopt climate emergency declarations at councils and Actions taken by cities to improve their environment are not only for future generations, but also benefit cities right now by improving air quality and reducing traffic congestion and road injuries. Uh, well, we know that there are many, many jobs, for example, in making buildings more energy efficient and also the installation of solar panels and photovoltaics. So these are really jobs-rich new industries. Small cities are playing leadership roles and working with other cities to tackle climate change through voluntary action. Kim bo Arirang News. Now, even with the state utility shutting off uh, electricity to avert more wildfires sprouting up, California, unfortunately, is still burning at least large parts of it. For more on this and other news from around the world, let's turn to our Kim Dami about this uh, situation. So just how serious are these wildfires now? Mark, a wildfire's name as the Kincaid Fire swept across Sonoma County in California on Wednesday night local time. Utilities, including Pacific Gas and Electric and Southern California, have previously cut off electricity as a preventive measure. But the fast-growing fire, which is being fanned by powerful winds, flared up early Thursday, burning down around 40 square kilometers as of that morning. According to CNN, that's destroying one American football field every three seconds. Almost 200,000 homes and businesses are without power, and more than half a million homes and businesses in California could lose power this week. No casualties have been reported yet. California's dry conditions and strong winds have previously led to some of the deadliest and most destructive wildfires in the U.S. Now on updates on the grim discovery in the U.K., 39 people found dead this week in the refrigerated trailer in Essex have been identified as Chinese nationals. Essex police have confirmed on Thursday that the eight of the deceased are women and 31 are men. Reports suggest the victims froze to death in temperatures of minus 25 degrees Celsius, and police have been granted an extra 24 hours to question lorry driver Moore Robinson on suspicion of murder. Chile's government is making concessions in attempts to combat week-long deadly protests over price increases. Chilean President Sebastian Pinero on Thursday announced a freeze until the end of next year on a 9.2% increase in electricity tariffs. Hundreds of demonstrators still dissatisfied with economic concessions returned to the streets on Thursday. At least 18 people have died in violence that began after a four-cent subway fare rise imposed by the government due to rising oil prices and weaker currency. Now it's time for our Life and Info segment where we take a look at useful information for your everyday life. Today we're going to talk about a way to find high quality goods at lower prices and who uh, doesn't like that. For more, I'm glad to say we have our Yoon Jong-min joining us in the studio. So Jong-min, I've heard that people here in South Korea can buy what are essentially almost new products for much, much cheaper prices than they would be able to purchase a brand new uh, product. Yeah, you're right, Mark. So um, there are stocks of new products that are returned due to some reasons, uh, such as minor defects, mm. and sellers repair and resell them to customers at much lower prices. So it means you can buy a $5,000 sofa at $2,500 if you are buying a refurbished one, and we call it the refurbished market. Refurbished goods can be sold with up to 70% off the original price. The goods can range from electronics to furniture and clothing. More and more people want quality goods at a more reasonable price. Those include homemakers, single households and young people, including newly married couples. I'm looking for a fridge to store kimchi because mine's broken. I'm comparing the prices with products at other shops. I prefer ones that are easy to use and that are cheaper. 
The refurbished market is a problem solver, solver for both sellers and buyers because the sellers can get rid of their return stock, while the buyers can get almost new products at much cheaper prices. Industry experts say the market has grown to nearly 8.4 billion US dollars this year. Okay, so it's big business is what you're saying, a multi-billion dollar business uh, sector here in South Korea, many people w looking for bargains. But the thing that is in the back of my mind listening to this is why exactly were these products returned in the in the first place and is there something in particular that if we're thinking about buying a refurbished product we should keep a close eye out for? Yeah, um, like I said, there can be many reasons um, the the products can have minor defects or scratches. Uh, some products are returned just because um, customers change their mind after right. purchase. Yeah. And um, that's not all. The shop also gives discounts for products that have been on display at a store. But of course, there are things that customers, consumers have to check before they buy products. We recommend customers to check any defects, such as scratches, before buying goods. Most importantly, it would be wise for them to test the home appliances at the shop and check they operate well. Consumer groups often recommend people to check before buying anything, of course, but they say it's especially important to make sure the goods don't have any problems if they're buying goods that have been refurbished. Yeah, I'm just looking at the video as you're speaking there, Jungmin, and I see that wrap around uh, sofa for mm -hmm. less than 1 million won, which yeah. is a pretty good deal. That's uh, around 1,000 uh, uh, US dollars. But I hear there are also super cheap uh, products you can also buy at retail shops or even large supermarkets. Tell us more about that. Yes, you're right. So um, while some shops are going premium, others are uh, targeting people who want less expensive products. Mm. So a local convenience store brand released own brand groceries this month. Ramen noodles cost just 500 Korean won, that's about 40 cents. A cup of coffee costs 900 won or 70 cents. Also, you can buy a loaf of bread at 1500 won or $1.30. One dollar shops are also popping up across the country. And not just that, wholesalers and retailers stock goods like tissues, mineral water or toothpaste at much cheaper prices. These days, many stores also provide buy one, get one free and three for two deals. Yeah, that's very useful information. Um, if you walk around Seoul, you can see these no brand shops popping up. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's that big one, Daiso, that sells lots of cheap products yes. uh, as well. And it's good to see finally that we're seeing more of these one plus one mm -hmm. and uh, buy two, get uh, get one, one free, free yeah. uh, popping up in Korea because they never used to be that popular back in the day but it's good to see that we can get more stuff more bang for our buck mm -hmm. Jungmin as always thank you very much for coming in well thank you my pleasure Mark Good morning. It might be late October, but it still feels like late September. And it's shaping up to be another warm day, with temperatures hovering way above the season norms under partly sunny skies. Gold, red and orange hues are painting the landscape in Korea's mountains, and the colors of autumn are providing us with some amazing views. Fall colors are at or approaching their peak, so there is still time to catch the fall colors before it's too late. And those who plan to head out and enjoy the autumn colors this weekend, be aware that there will be big drop in readings starting tomorrow. And tomorrow morning could be the coldest morning of the season so far. So those who are planning to head home late tonight, be sure to wear a thick jacket. Mountainous regions and central parts of the country could see frost tomorrow morning. But overall, great weather this weekend, but dress accordingly to try and avoid catching a cold. That's Korea for you, and here's the international weather for views around the world.
Well, that's all the news and weather we have for now on this Friday morning here in Seoul. Stay tuned to Arirang TV. We have our next newscast coming up at noon Korea time. I'll be filling in for Lee Ji-yoon uh, today. So until then, goodbye.